We've got flags and banners And if you mind your manners We might even get to standards And what they represent So just take my boy's hand And we'll both try to understand How this vexillar logic podcast Could be flagged for content Flagged for content What's up, Vexheads? And welcome to episode 51 of Flagged for Content. It's the only podcast about flags. Tell all your friends that, your coworkers, get the word out. It's the only one. Uh, it is also a Flags for Good podcast, which I mention every week. One, because they sponsor us. And two, because they have the goodest flags. Uh, right now, he's got, they've got like a uh, Women's History Month. Um, there's like the suffragette flag, some vote flags, a few other things there. They carry our show's flag, which, you know... Uh, some people like, some people have mixed opinions on. But in any case, if you go over there, you can use code flagged for content for like the number on anything you get. Just like use it at checkout and you'll get yourself 10% off and get the show a little bit of a bump as well. So anyway, not a whole lot of extra curricular stuff to get into this week before the show. So um, yeah, I'll just give a brief rundown. We have Rob from the Flags That Go Hard Twitter account. If you follow this show, statistically, you probably follow that account just due to, well, statistics, like I said. Um, anyway, it was a blast to kind of put a face to the account name and all that. Um, and yeah, Rob and I had a really good time going over, you know, past tournaments, future tournaments. Obviously, he's got his March Madness one that starts literally tomorrow, March 18th. So yeah, check that out. Um, check out the show. I hope you like us. If you weren't a follower before this, go ahead and give us a follow, a like, a review, you know, whatever. Um, and all that aside, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Take it away, past Andy. <laughs> Folks, we have a true Twitter celebrity today. You know him from the Flags That Go Hard Twitter account. You know him as a fan of the Buffalo Bills. And again, you know him from the Flags That Go Hard Twitter account. It's Rob Cabral. Thanks for having me, Andy. Pleasure to be here. Up, Glad man? we could finally get a chance to do this. How you doing? Likewise. No, it's good to finally um, put a face to the... Not even a face to the name. Well, a face to the name, to the name of the account and everything, really, in this case. Um, but yeah, I... I you know, full disclosure for those who are listening and watching, did not know Rob other than from his account and uh, didn't know you're a Buffalo boy. How are things up there? I'm a big Buffalo boy, born and raised here, went to school here. Um, right on. It, it's good. Um, it, in typical Buffalo fashion, the weather is all over the board. Uh, we were 65 and sunny yesterday. Today, we had house storms in the morning and it's 30 and windy. Ooh. And it will be 65 and sunny tomorrow. So, Ooh, this is good weather talk. I don't yeah. usually get, you know, as many ups and downs, as much uh, roller coaster action on the weather. Yeah, well, we um, have a very, yeah. yeah, our weather is very, very peculiar. We're right yeah, on Lake I Erie, imagine, like, so uh, we get all the, as stuff comes off the lake, we <laughs> just get blasted by it. So that's why you see all the snow. And yes. That's no, why that makes sense. I went to school in Boston and, forth, yeah. and I expected basically for it to be like Buffalo for some reason, because coming from Tennessee, you're like, well, everywhere up north, they just get a ton of snow. That's just like mm -hmm. how it works up north. And then, uh, yeah, I had a few friends that went to school like closer to the Great Lakes and they were like, oh, no, it's what you get in Boston is nothing like what we get here from like lake effect stuff. But well, that's fantastic. And this has been the weather talk section of the podcast. But <laughs> let's go ahead and get into what is on the flagpole today. So Vex says we have some pretty exciting stuff. We have our usual overrated and underrated flags. We have both a favorite flag and an entry level flag. We're going to get into Rob's upcoming March Madness tournament and some smaller ones that may spin off from it. Then finally, we will pick his brain on how to run an account that only goes after the hardest flags but first before we get into any of that rob i like to ask my guest what is your favorite flag so i i had been thinking about this one for a while and i i 
my initial answer ended up being my final answer. Um, First thought, best thought. Exactly, exactly. As they say. I was told <laughs> once, um, if you ever want to, if you're stuck making a tough decision, sleep on it. And when you wake up, the first thing you think of is what you down deep really want to do. And I suppose the first flag I thought of when I woke up this morning, when I was still trying <laughs> to decide, um, was that of Quebec. Okay. In, in Canada. Right on. Yeah. Um, for no super strong reason other than I think it looks super clean. Um, I love the Florida Lee. Um, yeah. It uh, didn't particularly perform well in my ratings on the account, nor in the tournament I ran last year. But doesn't stop me. I right. And just <laughs> I think it just looks great. Uh, sticks out. Which, uh, what tournament was it a Canadian like provincial tournament or was it like it, a broader? It was, it was a, a broader, um, uh, it was my, it was my broad March Madness tournament. It did ironically okay. though end up losing to another Canadian province, uh, New Brunswick beat it out. Oh, oh, okay, interesting, very interesting. So, yeah, no, I, I also am a fan of the Quebec flag. I've had like uh, two Quebecers on the show as well at various points. And um, yeah, I, I am a fan, uh, definitely a fan of the Florida Lee, the color scheme, the, you know, kind of like quartered. It's simple. It's clean. Like you said, like it's ubiquitous where it's, you know, where it's native. Like it's yeah. just, you know, maybe like two inches lower than the <laughs> maple leaf in a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Like, any reason that's your favorite? Like, was that one of the earlier it, ones you discovered? Or I guess we'll was. get into the earliest, but... Yeah, it, it was. And um, sort of a silly story why it... You know, the first time I saw it, I was like, well, that, that is like a... I don't live too far away from Quebec. Um, and only, only right. a couple, maybe Fair. like four or five hour drive. So I did see it on occasion growing up. Um, right, yeah. And I was like, you know, that, that is like a nice flag. It's a clean flag. But then once I, I began running the account, um, and I'll get into that story in a bit, mm. uh, I was, you know, I, again, in Buffalo, big hockey town. I'm scrolling a website that has a bunch of hockey player stats laid out. And next to each player is their flag of nationality. Um, right. Okay, yeah, like if, if you watch the Olympics or something, like it, it sticks the flag next to the player. And for yeah. whatever reason, this particular website, um, in particular, in particularly indicated French Canadian players with the Quebec flag rather than the Canadian flag. And right. seeing it like just like stacked up, even like this tiny pixelated version with all these other flags, you know, the Norwegian flag and the Swedish flag and American and Canadian. I was like, yeah, that is that is a really nice flag. It it does yeah. stick out and it is really aesthetically pleasing to look at. Um even in this lineup in in a very twenty by twenty pixelated form on this website. I Right, right. That's sort of what put it over the top for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine like um like if a player was like from uh Toronto or Vancouver or whatever, they would just put the Maple Leaf flag. So Yeah. Yeah. It it makes it like almost stand out even more. It you know, it honestly at that point puts it on the same level. Uh you know, as far as those graphics go anyway. So Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm not exactly sure why that particular website decided to split it out like that, but yeah, it's I'm interesting, happy they did. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, there was a similar thing, I feel like, in the uh, NFL this year, right, where um, there are a few players from from Martinique that did not like the snake flag. Yeah, I've I've intended to post that for a while, and I'd, I'm not sure the full story, but I had, I had heard that there's controversial things surrounding it, so I avoided it to this point, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. no... For for sure, but like, um, it was interesting because like, yeah, the, like they allowed like players to I forget exactly what it was, um, either put you know little stickers of the flag like on part of their uniform or you know patch I forget what, or if it was just a visual graphic that was only seen on like broadcasts, but uh, for most of the Martinique players, I th think they, I can't remember if they put the French flag or put like a third thing entirely. But they did not put the snake flag for, you know, 
reasons for for yeah. <laughs> yeah. reasons that have become obvious in uh recent times but yeah no it's interesting um um you know what flags they tend to use for sporting events and uh the episode hasn't aired yet but the episode prior to the one we're recording right now we talk about northern ireland and which flags yes. they tend to yeah. use for right like in fifa in the um the uh six nations you know like in various other things and it's it's interesting what they what they choose to use for you know kind of like my well i don't know even really what the word is but like northern ireland and quebec kind of share a similar relationship with their national governments i would say to put it very very broadly (laughs) yeah i would agree yeah um and we probably can just like leave it at that for now but yeah we do need to get into so that's your favorite what is the um or wait was that your favorite of the one that got you into it that was my favorite that was your favorite that was my favorite yeah what is the one that actually got you into them in the first place um unsurprisingly probably the city of buffalo um one okay. I, I i grew up i it is i don't get this impression from a ton of cities i visit um or maybe i'm just not looking hard enough um but the the city of buffalo flag is flown pretty frequently here um and it it looks it technically is probably nothing more than a typical seal on a on a bed sheet type flag it's just a white seal on a on a blue bed sheet yeah but i think it's got a couple of unique um features to it it's got it's got a bunch of lightning bolts so the the seal in the middle is basically depicting a scene of um the a port on lake erie uh, which is really the the basis of the city right Um, but surrounding that seal there's a bunch of lightning bolts fanning out which i think is a unique design um but it also speaks to um buffalo's is they're also not super commonly known as but they're all referred to as a city of light because they're the first American city to have widespread electric lighting on their streets. Okay. Yeah. So that that's the backstory behind the lightning bolts. Yeah. Um, did not know that. Yeah. So I, I'd seen this flag, you know, my entire life and it wasn't until like oh. a year and a half ago when a friend of mine and in, in, ironically in a discord server, um, <laughs> post he he started a vexillology channel and i had no idea what that word even meant um <laughs> and he and he posted the the buffalo flag and he posted the all this that whole explanation about it and i was like wow this is this is pretty interesting um and so i we we kind of went back and forth um talking talking things back over um and then after after a couple months i was like you know what would be fun if we started, or if I started this Twitter account where we take all these flags we've been talking about, we call it flags that go hard after all these other Twitter gimmick accounts. We post some of the stuff that we've been talking about and and that's sort of how the whole thing got going was this explanation of the Buffalo flag posted to a Discord server 18 months ago. Dude, and just 18 months ago? Yeah, I... Yeah. I guess that's like around about the time that that I was getting started with a lot of this too. But like, because yeah, I feel like your account has just like always been there. I didn't really know that the uh, origin story was so recent. Yeah, and so, I, actually... so I mean, so locally based either. Like, sorry, I was just writing down a, like a couple of things that you said there. Like, uh, one, the fact that you've like known it your whole life living in Buffalo is such a different experience than what I've had growing up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and then uh, living in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The only place I've lived where I really knew the flag was Boston, and they have a terrible flag. It's, yeah. a, it's a seal on a bed sheet, but not as good as Buffalo's. Basically. Yeah. It, it does feel, like I said, in visiting other cities, it does feel pretty unique. Um, American cities, that is. I, yeah. I think... Um, Chicago is similar. I think they're, sure. and they DC. should be proud of their flag. Um, yep. And, you know, they have sports teams that incorporate it in their jerseys and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, it's not very often. You see, I mean, maybe the American, maybe the state flag. That's usually to the extent. If yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very interesting. Cause like, I mean, I have seen this one before. As soon as I looked it up, I was like, oh yeah, I know this one. But um, as far as like when we generally talk about like city flags, 
I mean, what do we talk about? Like uh, Tulsa, Denver, yeah. uh, sometimes Phoenix, Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, like I guess there's a recency bias a little bit inherent in that too. Um, but we don't often talk about Buffalo, but this, I mean, yeah, it was one enough to get you into flags enough to, or, you know, vexillology, I guess, enough to like start yeah. the account and two, just, um, yeah, as far as the city flag, I mean, like you said, it is technically an SOB, but it's not, it's not, not memorable. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this yeah, one would stick in your mind yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, personally, I've got some sentimental, sentimental attachment to it. Um, sure. sure. I mean, there's always sure that, sways, but... tons of opinion, the... but yeah, there's always that. But like the fact that you saw it everywhere, like I have zero sentimental attachment to the Knoxville flag because I never saw it anywhere. Um, if I had, <laughs> you know, if I had had a few more court dates or something then I would have seen it like inside the <laughs> yeah. courthouse, but that's like the only time that I think it's ever, yeah, like popped up. I can't even see it outside of government buildings. So yeah, there's definitely something to be said for that. Um, yeah, very cool. All right. So, all right. Did you want to, I forget, did you want to do your under or you wanted to do your overrated first? Oh, yeah, we can start with overrated. Yeah. Let's go ahead and just get, to get into that. Yeah. yeah. So my, my overrated flag um, which is not to necessarily say I think it's a bad flag. I think it's just overrated. Um, is Nepal? I'm. It's got the unique shape, which I uh -huh. do appreciate, and I think that's just about all it's got going for it. Um, <laughs> but I do yeah. know it sticks out probably more than it should because of that shape. Um, yeah, I just I could take her to leave it. To be honest, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I agree with that because it, yeah, I mean, you pretty much said it all. <laughs> like, I don't know how, yeah. how much even more there is to say it's, it's yeah, it's rated on the shape alone. Like, Oh, isn't this different? Um, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I almost feel like the old versions of Nepal were more interesting where it was more mm -hmm. of a double pennant, like, well, pennant in the traditional kind of, um, you know, right. Or well, a cute triangle sense. I guess they all are, but listeners and viewers will know what I mean. I think we had an entire episode on it that was called Oops All Ohio, and then it ended up being half about Nepal, but I, um, yeah. I yeah, it's like the sun and the Ohio, moon, and yeah. then there's some colors and it's triangles. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. unique. I'll give it that. Yeah. So, overrated. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and get into your underrated, or you have any more to say on Nepal? Not really. Yeah, we, we can get into underrated. I, I will say for both overrated and underrated, um, the thing I I had the toughest time judging was um, how how they're viewed by the larger community in the first place. In order to even determine them as overrated or underrated. Yeah, these um, are these are like. I mean, I, I like casually ask this to like, you know, every guest that comes on, but it's, it's definitely something you have to think about because like, I, you know, even a lot of guests come on and they're like, well, I think this is underrated, but I don't know if it's even like rated at all. So it definitely requires yeah. a, a certain level of like, I guess like maybe the question itself presupposes a level of knowledge about the flag or something, but, um, you know, I think we're pretty pretty lenient with uh you know it's always fun to discover new flags on this show yeah. or elsewhere so agreed agreed and i do have a i have a smidgen of empirical evidence in my in my ratings on well then let's account. hear it but we will we will uh yeah we can probably get into that more yeah no absolutely in a bit but um so i actually have two unrated flags which are, which are very similar so i wanted to group them together okay um because they're both sort of for the same reason um, and that is the flag of South Carolina and the flag of Macau, which are both sort of, so South Carolina, which I do think is rated highly for what it's worth. I just think it should be rated even higher. I think it's one of the better state flags in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just, it's got, you know, the palm tree and then, and then the moon and the stars. And it, it just looks like it's a very like calming scene or something. It looks like, you know, I would like. I would like hang out in this flag and have a beer or something. 
<laughs> I don't know. It, it it just like sparks no. some like some level of soothing that that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, and similarly, Macau, they've gave I I love the shade of green that they've picked, and then they've got like a lotus flower on a bridge over some water that's reflecting. Mm-hmm or it looks like as it's reflecting and then they've got stars overhead too which i believe actually represent uh their attachment to, to china but um all in all puts together like like sort of a scene almost of like oh okay i kind of like it seems like i can pick out a place in time where this was used as a point of reference right to design this flag um so so i think of them similarly and i think they are both very aesthetically pleasing to look at yeah right yeah i i guess i've never thought of them i i know both these flags i've never thought of them kind of in the same uh breath or sentence or you know what have you but i i definitely agree with your points on the south carolina flag especially like living down here in the southeast it's you know we go to south or growing up we used to go to south carolina like yearly to hilton head or somewhere near there and it definitely is it's on you know like every koozie that you can buy like anything yeah. touristy that you get there's uh some version of the palm tree in the crescent and i think it's even on like a lot of the like you know root whatever signs um it's ubiquitous for a reason i i think yeah. like in much the same way that that most of our state well most of the good state flags are ubiquitous new mexico uh, right. tennessee we have the tri-star like on every overpass at this point um yeah i can't speak to macau personally um but yes yeah, so that is one that i actually did i have posted on the account before um how did it fare pretty pretty bang on average maybe even a little below average so um i so i below each of my tweets i know you know but i'm guessing not everybody does i right. have um like a rate this flag type uh poll pretty much yeah. and you only get four options on Twitter, x.com. I'm, I'm just going to call it Twitter. From we, we call it Twitter. We all know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, so I give you know, one through four stars. And I'd say probably, I probably average like 3.3 to 3.4 stars per flag just based on natural spread. Oh, really? Score, so there's not, okay. Yeah, there's not, I don't typically get like, poor reviews i don't i think that's just because people are lenient lenient voters i, I but, guess like the kind of people that follow like a flags that go hard account are like hell yeah flags four stars yeah, or yeah. you know whatever yeah and I, and I do try my best to handpick ones that i think are cool and right yeah no I, yeah, and, it, so. <laughs> and it doesn't go unnoticed yeah i mean we'll yeah, get more into that to, but yeah, yeah yeah for sure I tried to skim the cream of the crop at least, but yeah. Macau, I <laughs> yeah, believe, yeah. I believe came in at like a, they were like a 3.1. I actually probably have it up in the background. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so they were, yeah, they were actually a little bit below average um, compared to the rest of the flags I post. Do I have that on my Which, no, no, it's below. Yeah, they, they, they lost, so I've posted two. I, I posted the actual flag. And I posted um, a proposed flag of theirs. They did a, a referendum in '93, right? Yeah, yeah. And it got it got beat out by the proposed flag. Interesting. Which I don't personally, agree with. But are there like, um, well, shoot. I guess we'll get into that in the next session. But I do wonder, yeah. like, or the next segment, I do wonder how, because you you do post like a decent amount of proposed ones. I wonder how often they beat their current ones. Yeah. That is a an interesting idea for maybe a, <laughs> maybe a potential. Uh, future I don't know if you tournament. have like data for yeah. that or or. I not offhand. Um, yeah, I probably could. Uh, I mean, like I I I know I've shown you within the last hour or two. I just have a, a an Excel spreadsheet pretty much where I track all these ratings. Right. Yeah. So I I probably in cases where I posted both the actual flag and a proposed flag for that particular country, I probably could pull. A, um, yeah plus if you have them else that, yeah. yeah yeah you could do it pretty easy i would think i don't know yeah i'm not good at yeah. this type of stuff so. <laughs> i um yeah but yeah no i i do have your list of the highest ones which uh teaser we will definitely get to 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, so the Macaw um, redesign lost to the current one. And how did the current one did fairly well, you said, or did it get like the the current one, the current official one, I think underperformed is a little bit below average. Right. The proposed one, and and there there are a lot of proposed ones. I'll send you the one I'll, I'm thinking of. Okay. Um, probably after we're done recording here. Um, okay. That one did that one did pretty well. That one got oh, it did three, better. Three, okay, now three point five. Yeah. yeah. So the proposed flag, yeah, that was in my top. It's one of my the top fifty that I posted out of I don't even know probably three hundred total. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like uh, thinking about like redesigns for places that you have little to no familiarity with right and i'm not saying it's like it's it's not like a you know it's not a value judgment it's just interesting to think about because like um i've even seen like accounts that have redesigned like flags for uh tennessee at large or knoxville or chattanooga or whatever and i saw one that redesigned one for knoxville that went off of some like uh they were like online like i saw somewhere where it was called like the queen city of the appalachians or the queen city or something and i was like i am from there i've literally never heard it called that but they had like a crown in their redesign to represent that and i was like it's so interesting like what you can look up online and like you know kind of like redesign based on what you see there versus going to a place and like getting a feel for it and i'm not suggesting that like i i know it's not realistic that we all go to all of the places that we redesign flags for i had max on uh from sweden who's redesigning you know the flags of all the north dakota counties like you know it's yeah 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 but it's 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 just interesting like um it's an interesting exercise agreed agreed um and I hear you too. Um, and it's tough too to bring uh, you're, you're to to toe the line of objectivity and subjectivity. Um, I I recognize I'm I am totally biased. I'm subjectively slanted towards the buffalo flag. Um, I I think that's also a flag that I posted that didn't perform particularly well. But <laughs> it means something to me that it doesn't mean to to most people. Probably almost anybody else that follows the right. account. So. Um, yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I constantly say the Tennessee state flag is the best state flag, and I get, you know, more than a good deal of pushback on that. I get a lot I, of people say, I would oh, probably it's top five. Among it's top that crowd. five. <laughs> I think it's fine. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I don't, I don't even know if I had it in my top five. Well. I don't dislike it, though. All right. Well, episode Sorry. over. Um, <laughs> no, we will. Right. <laughs> that said, though. Um, We do need to take a brief commercial break, and we will be right back after that. Okay, and we are back with more from Rob Cabral. So, Rob, tomorrow you are starting your annual March Madness Tournament. Um, but before we kind of get into this year's, let's go over last year's uh, and maybe even before that and just kind of like how you set these things up in general. Sure, sure. Um, and thanks for the for the preview. Um, this is something I'm very excited for. Um, this will be the, our, our second annual <laughs> March Madness tournament. Um, and I'll get into to potential plans coming up for this year. Um, but first, just kind of want to recap, uh, explain what it is and recap what happened last year. Um, so, again, I started the account just a little over a year ago, back in December. Um, and come March time, there's a big real life basketball tournament, a college basketball tournament. Um, college sports is a, it's a big deal in the United States. Um, yeah, that's true. A the, lot of our international listeners may not actually know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so it's a big thing. It's um, a 64 team single elimination bracket. Um, that starts in late March, finishes in early April. Um, that's called March Madness. So we thought, I thought, hey, it would be a good idea if uh, coinciding with the real life March Madness basketball tournament, we picked sixty four flags, put a put a bunch of Twitter polls together, and they all came together um, in a sixty four team bracket. So the way we rolled it out last year was 
um, sort of four subsections, so four, four quadrants of 16 flags right. each. Yeah. And those quadrants were um, 16 city flags, 16 country flags, 16 like regional, state, province level flags, mm-hmm. and then 16 historical flags. Um, and the it, it was a it was a ton of fun. We got a ton of engagement. Um, people got like really passionate about it. Um, the yeah. four flags that ended up coming out of of each respective quadrant were um, St. Louis, Missouri was the was the city flag. Mm-hmm. Kazakhstan was the country flag. Uh, Qing Dynasty was the historical flag, and New Mexico was the the state slash province slash regional flag. Um, so I thought we had a really strong final four. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri ended up winning it all. Um, they had a very strong push from a lot of local Twitter base, but that's the way it goes. You know, they got they got a handle on it and and compiled the votes. Um, but overall, I was really happy with how it went. Um, I think I think people really enjoyed it. Um, so, in yeah. order to do it right this year. Um, trying to start to put together the pieces. Um, we'll be following a, a similar idea um, with 16 city flags, 16 country flags, 16 state, province, region flags. Mm-hmm. The, the fourth quadrant of 16 flags, and I'm curious, Andy, um, if you have any uh, perspective on this. We, we did historical last year. Um, I'm not necessarily committed to doing historical again this year um right i would i mean we can of course um i would be interested other ideas floating around in my brain are are, um maybe proposed flags um maybe less so like fictional flags i don't know that i really want to get into like tv show fan base when you start getting into fictional flags like that that does open like a really wide door i feel like um yeah because it it, there there are so many to pick from especially for you to choose 16 of them right um right and then yeah yeah i don't know most i i feel like most of the options floating around in my head are some form of historical flags just like more narrow yeah. Um Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you could do, well, I'm trying to think of something that doesn't overlap the other sections too and I don't know it, really what else tough. there is. Yeah. Tr- um, trying even to think of um cuz like I've got my flags organized down in the basement. I have one of the videos on the YouTube is about that. But like, you know, some of my categories are a little weirder than others. And I'm trying to think about the weirder categories of those but even then it's like you're just getting into flags that say like cold beer or like a sports team's name or like yeah, you know like yeah the one behind you like or something sports, and it's like those again, aren't yeah fictional. really there's eligible. like um i think there's some really cool ones but it's a okay. very slippery slope like political party flags okay i i wonder this all right <clears throat> just thought anyway what if it were flags for um what's a good way to put it like communities or regions so like maybe like the sami okay. flag could be one maybe cascadia could be one yeah, um like maybe the iroquois, the iroquois nation flag oh yeah actually you could yeah. do like just native yeah yeah i was thinking like anything that like I, I i'm trying to think of like um again i'm like thinking in terms of like the categories that i have them in in the basement and one of them is is like ill defined, but it's kind of that which includes like Crimean Tatars, like uh, just you know, I guess like groups of people or or mm-hmm. yeah, I don't I don't know a better way to put it, but something like I that. yeah, I I pick it up what you're putting down though, yeah, it's stuff that it sort of it falls through the cracks like of an the ethnic, other three categories. I, yeah. I think like even yeah. the forest fens flag would would really fall into that category if you got, I uh, yeah yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, um, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like area flags. I think I talked with Michael Green about that kind of thing. Like, you know, there's a flag for Cascadia, for Appalachia, for Arcadian, like uh, French. Um, 
uh and that's just in north america alone not to mention obviously the like indigenous like the uh iroquois ones the mm-hmm. one on, yeah there's a few well there's one hidden behind me but uh yeah i don't know that's uh i do like that idea because it does kind of fill in gaps between the previous three categories right right again, I'm trying to think- is that to say i i won't sprinkle in historical flags. I mean, there's, sure, yeah, there's yeah, such yeah. a thing as historical country flags. We can consider that maybe a, in the country flag territory. I don't know. A very, very fluid with what goes into the tournament. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I do like okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Back to just like speaking about the tournament in like broad terms. Sure. Like, how yeah. do you pick? So, like, aside from that fourth category that, you know, is maybe like a little bit in flux, which is honestly just a whole fun aspect uh, of in and of itself. But, how do you pick the ones that go into the other categories? Do you pick based on, um, are you like secretly seeding them throughout the year and saying what gets the most votes or like, is it kind of just more whatever Rob wants? <laughs> Last year it was, it was the latter. It was whatever Rob wants. Um, mm-hmm. I did, uh, outsource to sort of a friend group, like, Hey, here's like, I've got like 40 ideas for each of these quadrants right can you help me like narrow some of these down um but at at the time that i had run that tournament again my account was only a couple months old i maybe had a couple hundred followers it was not a very it wasn't it it hadn't ballooned to the scope it has now um yeah and so yeah we we very much did it loosey-goosey i kind of we kind of hand-picked um and hand-seeded them ourselves um this year I have the benefit of having a, a, a database, I guess you could say, of every flag I've posted. Yeah, and I mean, how you they have were a rated. lot yeah. more data. Well, you have data. Yeah. 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 So I do have the ability to um, seed these flags. I, and I, and I think I will. I waffle on the idea of actually um, showing the seed of each flag in the poll itself. Um, right. Okay. Right. Cause you don't want to so, put your finger on the scale kind of. Right. I could thing. say, Hey, this was my number one seed. This had, this previously was voted super highly and it's going up against a 16 seed, which may have right. was probably, if I think if I, if I show that explicitly on the poll, I fear for potentially swaying. Um, and I'm sure in nine out of 10 cases, the, the higher seed of flag is going to win anyway. No. Um, I just don't want to run the risk of, of uh, diluting any results. Yeah. No, um, I, I think you're spot on with that because like, so in like, you know, most, you know, in like the actual like basketball March Madness tournaments and everything, obviously they're seated and obviously that shows uh in the tournaments you know you can bet on it etc whatever but those are also games of skill and like yes yeah to me this is a voting thing so it's to me very much a different animal uh you know i i i think i would prefer that you didn't show the seeds yeah and just have them at like a random order yeah i think yeah i think i think that levels the playing field a lot it's something that yeah. I hadn't thought about before you said it, though. Yeah, yeah, I I considered it last year too, because like I said, we we sort of we tried to intuitively seed them. Mm-hmm. Again, it's hard when it's one, maybe two people. I right. talked about the subjectivity versus objectivity thing before. Yeah, I think if yeah, I also I mean, part of it was like I don't want people um, voting subconsciously for the lower number just because that's supposed to mean it's better. Right. Yeah. I also you're, didn't want to open myself up to that kind of thing. Yeah, the underdog. Yeah, I, right. I didn't want to open up debates as to like how come this flag is a higher seed than this flag well, yeah. it'll come out in the wash anyway i guess we'll see yeah, um, yeah yeah so as it pertains to to my plan for this year's tournament um i do have have the ability to and i will be secretly seeding flags that i posted on my account before um that being said i th- i'm thinking probably an even split of flags that i've posted and so 32 flags that have been on the account before and that I have ratings for, um, and 32 brand new flags. Um, cause I also don't want it to be a complete rehash gotcha. of, of things okay. you've seen in the past. 
Um, yeah, and those so, yeah, kind of split up among the four, uh, you know, corners of the bracket, I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's us uh, there's a surprising amount of work that goes into the the design of the bracket. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I, I'm getting that just from everything we're talking about. Like, I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be easy just creating an entire 64 flag tournament. I mean, flag session does it like once or twice a year and then they get exhausted because it seems exhausting. Yeah, I mean, like props on you for putting it on and and for um I mean, honestly, for collecting the data in the first place, which I'd love to get into uh, uh yeah. here in a minute too yeah. because I mean, you're Yeah, so okay, so like keeping on the the topic of the tournament is it going to be a uh, daily vote or is it going to be like a uh, one from each bracket daily vote? Like what's the timeline that like you're talking about here? And is it the same as last year's or? Yeah, um, I'm planning on keeping the same format as last year, which I will even okay. have to yeah. go back and double check. Um, I'm pretty I'm fairly certain I remember how I ran it, which was um, so that there's six total rounds to get from to get from 64 down to one. Um mm. So the first round, there's 64 teams, so that consists of 32 matchups. Mm -hmm. I would, I'll probably be running four matchups a day, one from each quadrant. So, you know, that takes up yeah. eight days. Then yeah. the next round is 16 matchups, and I'll be posting two a day. That's another eight days. Um, yeah. Then, then once we get to 16. So a as the tournament goes on, I don't have the specifics in front of me. The whole tournament will probably take the better part of a month. Um, right. Because as we get to um, less matchups and, and we narrow down um, the better or more highly voted flags, yeah, um, I'll probably start to extend the poll length just out of drama, but also maybe out of fairness. No, totally. Like, yeah. that's what that's. Uh, that's an area of Twitter that I'm not well versed in is like, <clears throat> I know the reason that you only do one to four stars is because you can only have four options on those polls, right? Because otherwise it would be one to five. But yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Did not know if you could like extend the time or like how much kind of like leeway you had in in I guess like certain areas of it. I guess pretty much it would just be the time and the options. Um. Yeah. Yeah, but you leave believe... those ones open longer than the day that the the twenty four hours that's normal. Correct. Yeah, right, I okay. I believe, and this is one of the things I'll have to double check. Um, but I believe what I did last year is the first three rounds were all the polls were just a day. Then when we got to the quarterfinals, okay, yeah, or as it's referred to in basketball, March Madness, the Elite Eight. Um, sure. Then yep. I extended it to two days, and the finals were three days. Makes sense. Do you find the, like um as far as like total numbers voting do you find you get more votes on the ones that you leave open for 2 days or does it kind of average out to be about the same or it is definitely it is like a it's definitely like a a single tail distribution meaning like I get like 90% of my votes in the first 10 hours anyway right okay and then and then it, it usually it usually kind of dies out gotcha um, Gotcha. What I saw last year, though, which I was encouraged by, was um, sort of, I guess, like tribalism, you could maybe call it, where people, in particular, the, the matchup that comes in particular is the, is the semifinal matchup between New Mexico and St. Louis. And I had people from, presumably from St. Louis, and mm. people presumably from, Saint, from New Mexico, um, quoting, quote, tweeting the poll saying like, hey, we got like, Let's let's vote for our flag. Like <laughs> let's let's get this going. And that was happening like after the twenty four hour window. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd say tip, typically, you know, I get most of my votes. I probably don't need to extend it, but I do want to open up the opportunity that if yeah, it starts to catch fire and and people start to get a hold of it, um, because you never know to see where it goes. Yeah, exactly. You never know. Exactly. I mean, like your account is already you're not shy on followers, but like. I've had like I I just recently randomly had a TikTok video blow up that's been up there for over a year because like yeah. some other video linked off to it or some I don't pretend to know how yeah, TikTok it, works. It gets it gets caught in the algorithm or caught by one other account yeah, with yeah. hundred thousand followers and all of a sudden you're out there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's like a why not kind of thing, you know? Leave exactly. it open. Who cares? Yep. Um, yep. And yeah, like I definitely uh, 
I don't know if last year, well, I don't remember last year's tournament exactly other than, you know, the, the final four and the winners. Um, mm-hmm. But I know I sometimes do try and f- put my finger on the scales for flags you post that I think, you know, definitely deserve four stars or. Yeah. Yeah. Rarely Which one I star. I, I usually try and keep it to more like, this is a good one. Y'all vote for this. Um, but yeah, I may have to try and put my finger on the scales for the upcoming tournament as well not yeah, that i mean any... yeah i have like 300 followers so you know <laughs> yeah, it's all right it's all right but any, uh not to put you on the spot but um if you were to request one flag to be added to the bracket what do you think that would be in uh in that like fourth category or just in general could be any of them could be any of them yeah uh for sub national have you done sutherland um i have not why well, I, I don't think i posted it maybe i have actually i i, I couldn't remember what well, it was not part of the tournament last year I, though that's what so i was we, thinking yeah, is i don't yeah. think it was part of the tournament in any case um man i don't know because like on the one hand i would say sutherland because it's like one of my favorite if not my favorite flag but on the other hand like if it performs poorly like i don't want to know that <laughs> yeah i was a little disheartened by some of you the know? yeah you know, you know quebec got knocked out and buffalo got knocked out early and uh right. um i'm Philippine, part filipino and the philippine flag got knocked out early and it's like eh, yeah yeah it's yeah. kind of disappointing but yeah yeah because you'd attach to i mean like yeah it's not it's not news to anybody who's listening or watching uh listening to or watching this but you get attached to flags and For sure. ascribe For like sure. you know like shit part of my personality is in that flag, or you know whatever but i can't believe it lost to this now i hate that flag forever kind of thing and uh you know maybe i'm more petty than most but uh yeah you know i hope well, should you want it I'll, I'll i'll reserve a, <laughs> a, a flag spot for you <laughs> yeah i mean i think like off the top of my head it would be sutherland um okay yeah i think I, I really like the Isle of Sky flag, but I think a lot of people don't like the boat in Canton. Um, and I'm not that, even sure that I do. I think I may like it better without that, but it has that. So I can't yeah. change it. Uh, I don't mind it. That That's one too. I, I have definitely posted that one. And I think that was also posted part of the Nordic cross tournament that I, I it definitely was separate, part of that yeah. and i think i and it was one that i retweeted or quote tweeted too as well it, got yeah. pretty, it might have even won or maybe it came in second i think was it it was I, I, part of the final four were sky Katniss, sutherland and i don't remember what the other one was I th- there was Poland? like i had an, an estonian proposed flag Oh, that the was... Estonian proposed one made it really far, and honestly, yeah. is one of my like favorite proposed. Yeah. I thought that was first round fodder, but it made it all the way to the final four. It is a cool yeah. flag, though. Yeah, I, I yeah. like it. I like that one. I mean, like it's no uh, surprise to regulars, but I like the Nordic crosses a lot, including the uh, including that one and the proposed like uh, Normandy one for France. I mean, there's yeah. been a few people yeah. that have proposed various versions of it, but it's like. You know, it's usually a Nordic cross in, in yellow, sometimes fimbriated or not, uh, sometimes has like lions in Canton. But yeah, I remember some of the feedback to the to the Isle of Sky. <laughs> I don't remember whether it was part of the tournament or part of when I had posted it just straight up on the account. Um, some people didn't they didn't like the, the border. There's that thin black border on the on the cross itself. I don't know if you can picture that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, yeah, there was a handful of people that that were not fans of that in particular design piece. I was not. I I actually kind of like it. That's um, interesting. I think I I like it too. I think it, it separates it better. Yeah, and yeah. I don't mind about the you know. Whatever I don't think other. I would have actually noticed it if people didn't point out like, oh man, I hate that order. Yeah, that too. And, and now I'm yeah. like, I'm trying to picture it in my head without that. And I don't think it works as well, especially because you have the yellow and white, you know, Celtic cross kind of uh, motif there. I agree. With the yellow yeah. going over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, those people are wrong. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it still performed well. So, yeah. 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 So, um, 
as we mentioned up top and uh and as we've kind of like hinted at you have like a couple other smaller tournaments that are like you know dovetailing off of this one or maybe not even related but um that you're considering doing is that right that's correct yeah yeah um so similar to so I, we had just mentioned and talked about the nordic cross tournament right, um, right that was right. A, a miniature version of the same idea just a, a single elimination smaller bracket of a particular you know design the nordic cross yeah um with all exactly. that in mind yeah 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 <laughs> as me as well um with all that in mind i i I do love running these tournaments and it it always i really don't mind the administration of it because it always is like very eye-opening to me the yeah. results and i like seeing people like get into it and get passionate about it um so post this big tournament in march i'm thinking um maybe over this maybe doing one every couple months so maybe over the summer um a couple other ideas like um um proposed flags i don't know some other theme thematic type tournaments um another one that that uh i thought of a within the last week was um and hopefully i've got the follower base for this but saying something like hey um send me a redesign x flag we'll i'll pick on australia redesign the australian flag for me um first first 16 entrants or first 32 entrants first come first serve you're in a tournament and then you know your design your design gets matched up against other creators designs and they get voted on in the same public forum that um that we've run for all these other tournaments um i think that would be would be very interesting i i'm sure there's a lot of creators out there that would love to see how their things stack up oh, i would for like sure. to think at least i don't yeah i'm not one myself and um, you definitely get like a lot of uh i mean like you said you get a lot of engagement for that first off you do have the following for that i i saw your account um yeah. <laughs> secondly like Thank yeah I, I think it would be it would be um you'd get a lot of engagement from that and a lot of people subscribing to like notifications because if it's only like the first x amount you're accepting then yeah people are going to be all over that i think people yeah we'll probably come up with them in advance um yeah i mean uh, off the top of my head i can already think of like five for australia just from people that i know that would probably be right. like okay click click go you know right yeah they're, they're, i picked on them because they're, that's low-hanging fruit right um, right yeah <laughs> but but that also uh, like frees you from having to be like okay so we got like 50 submissions let me pick the best that, 16 that's or what whatever I, and run them yeah that's what i don't want to do exactly. it worked last year when i met i i handpicked the flags for the march Madness tournament um because they're flags that already exist i don't think anybody's gonna be offended i I would right. love to not have to put myself in a position to say, "Hey, I personally like this person's flag better than the others." Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I find the whole. I find the even though I'm not one myself, the the whole uh, design process to be fascinating. Um, yeah, I'll let other people do the hard work, I suppose. But yeah, uh, and it, yeah. also from the standpoint of. <laughs> of i hate saying this because it makes you sound grody but from the standpoint of, of of just content it's it's basically unlimited content and like i don't i don't think i'm gonna run out of flags that go hard <laughs> but the fact of the matter is there are a finite number of flags um and yeah you know it probably will take five or six years to exhaust that list at which point i could probably cycle back through it but um I don't know. I think there, there's tons of ways to try to keep things interesting yeah. and keep things fresh. Um, and that's an idea in particular that I, I'm very excited about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like, yeah, exactly. Like there's a finite number of actual flags, but literally an infinite number of potential flags. So yeah, you'd be yeah. foolish not to, yeah, not to take advantage of that, I think. Um, And yeah, like, all right. So speaking of flags that go hard, let's take a quick break. All right, and we are back. So, as promised, uh, we need to dig down into flags that go hard, the account, and flags that go hard as a concept. Like, I'm very curious as to how you how you pick the flags. I mean, let's let's start with how you pick the flags that you're going to do each day. Sure, sure. 
Um, so I sort of have I have uh, two input sources, I'd say. Um, one is myself, which is predominantly um, I've procured a, a giant Google Drive of fly, of slides. Okay, that right I pretty much I pretty much scout. I literally scour Wikipedia. Um, if you get far enough down a rabbit hole um, on Wikipedia, Wikipedia Commons, yeah. I'm I'm by that look, I'm guessing you've done the you're, same. You're, I was going to say you're you speaking my yeah. language, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Flags of this country and yes, flags of that yes. country and flags of this other country. Flags of this um, idea and just. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You can sort by design element, whatever you want. And, right, and so yeah. I'll literally just scroll those every once in a while. I'll just scroll all these these um, pages, yeah, like for hours at a time, and just one by one, I'll be like, "This one's cool. This one is cool. This one is cool. This one is cool." Um, that's probably the bulk of them. Um, that's probably seventy to seventy five percent of the flags I post right. are just ones that I've just plucked right off of Wikipedia that I think look cool. Um, the second input source, um, and one that I'm very grateful for, is um, people people either uh, tagging me in in tweets or just direct messaging me, like, "Hey, I think this flag is really cool. Um, would you be able to post it?" Right. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes there, there's overlap between the two. Oftentimes somebody will will send me a flag that I've um handpicked myself it's already kind of on your radar yeah Yeah. and it's sort and it's sort of validation it's like okay yeah that's i'm I'm (laughs) glad i'm glad that they sent this to me because it confirms that it's it's a cool flag um so i do have uh and i I apologize for anybody still waiting i do have quite a backlog of flags in my direct messages waiting to be posted not Um, a bad problem to have i consider that a good thing yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) um as far as the day to day, so so that's where I I collect my pool of flags. As far as the day to day selection, um, it's not super scientific. I try to avoid, uh, for example, posting like two American city flags back to back. Or I try to avoid posting okay, right. like two European country flags back to back. I try to like, bounce around between like um, different areas of the world, um, different administration levels meaning like city country state yeah, that makes um, sense. mix in a proposed flag every now and again um i even like the and this part is endlessly fascinating to me um and i think we'll talk about it probably more in in a bit i feel like i have a preconceived notion as to how a certain flag is going to get rated right um and, and that is not always correct i, I was so, but I, say. I I do try to vary, like, I think this flag is going to do really well. I think this flag is going to do okay. I think this flag is going to do it. So I try to, like, stagger it so that I'm not, you know. Just curious, like, I mean, and we can even maybe get to that now, but, like, uh, sure. yeah. so when you do think, okay, this flag is going to do well, this flag is going to do, you know, mid, not well, whatever, um, is that based on your opinion of the flag or the knowledge that you've gleaned from how people vote on the account if that makes sense yeah it does it does um i that is a really good question (laughs) i want to say i want to say it, it is my my own personal opinion um that being said i think i was so new to the to the space when i started the account yeah yeah that i didn't have super I I pretty malleable opinions in the first place. And as I've run the account for so long and seen these ratings for so long, I think my opinion has been shaped by performance of life. So I I think it's, I think it's some of column A and some of column B. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say like, I'd have trouble running an account like that where it doesn't kind of creep in at least a little bit. Like, do I like this flag or do I just like it because, or, you know, or the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. one thing one thing that that does stick out to me as a as a design element that always seems to perform well and I think is well represented by the yes. Buckingham chair behind you is angry animals. Any any sort of any sort of animal that is that is fierce looking gets rated pretty highly. Right. Okay, let's 
Yeah. I mean, on that tan, let's go into that tangent. Let's lean into it. Like, um, sure. sure. Okay. So yeah. What are the elements, as you just said, angry animals, is it, well, let me form the entire question first, but like, yeah, between like animals, um, and other design elements, like I'm curious to know, like, you know, top, bottom, mid range, uh, or just like, I guess you probably don't notice the middle ones as much, but ones that perform worse and better, I'm sure you do. And as far as animals specifically, like you said, angry, do the angry animals tend to get more shine than just like, you know, your standard bear rampant doing nothing else? I think so. Or at least an animal doing something unique or okay. having some other unique element to it. Right. Um, and I, I think just broadly speaking, uh, it. I think may, maybe me naming the account flags that go hard has influenced the follower base. Oh, it definitely in influences it's just, the way that I vote. Yeah, yeah, because it's not it's not you know, flags that are designed very well. It's it's like yeah, man, that flag is. Yeah, that's like, why I set up probably, my uh, background the way that I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. It probably shatters everything we know about about flag making right? rules. But damn, if it doesn't go hard. Um. So yeah, so like some of the 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 example that comes to mind is um I know how to attempt to pronounce this and I'm probably going to butcher it. Jelesnogorsk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I know the one. The, the, the bear the bear splitting the atom. I literally showed it um, to my fiance earlier and I said I wish I had this flag so that I could put it up behind me during this recording session. Yep. Because yep, like I've, that's that's when I think of flags that go hard. A bear splitting an atom while the you know nuclear rings are around him it's it's harder to think of anything harder i agree and, and i'm glad you mentioned that because that was the very first flag i ever posted back when i had like five followers um but i oh, reposted I didn't know it. that <laughs> I, I had my first my my one year um anniversary account i don't know a month or two ago and i posted it a second time and to to great fanfare oh for um, sure yeah. So it's yeah, stuff like that. So it's not just sure. you know, it's not just a bear. It's a bear splitting a nuclear atom, or like Perm Russia is a bear with a Bible on its head. Yes, yep. Or yeah, um, Buckingham. I'm sure that it's not just an angry. Is it a swan? Or is uh, it's it a, a swan. It's, I think it's, a it's swan. where the okay. royal swans are raised and something like okay. that. Yeah. yeah, it's just not a swan staring at you. It's got the it's got the chain and the crown and everything it's, it's pretty, got like that added element yeah. yeah and it's like the red and black like anarcho-communist almost like colors like yeah. on it like yeah yeah it's, yeah there's uh, something about it that, that just you know it, it is I, inspiring maybe is the word um i mean for lack of a better word it goes hard it does it yeah, does yeah. yeah so no for sure yeah um it is like yeah it's I think it's more often than not that you put up ones that have some kind of element on them that aren't just a tricolor or a triband or, you know, whatever. There's usually some kind of element on it. Um, and I guess, like, from what you're saying, the animals do the best. Is there, like, any other kind of, like, notable, I don't know, other best mm -hmm. or worst? Or is there any kind of, like, other, like, trends that you can, like, let us in on? Or there, there one other one. I, there's probably two. Um, I do think uh, I do get I do get some people who aren't as happy about it. Um, but based on the voting, a lot of the new school design flags tend to perform really well. I'm talking like that came out in the last like three or four years. Okay. Um, it's a Lincoln, Nebraska. So I was um, going to say your Lincolns, your uh, yeah, Milwaukee your people's Kansas. flags, your uh, yeah, Springfield. Like even pull up yeah, my list okay. here. Yep, Springfield did really well. Um, Syracuse, Norm, Norman, Oklahoma. I have not posted Syracuse yet. I probably will soon, though. Syracuse is one of my favorites. Um, I know we were talking pre-show, but I, I only live a couple hours away from Syracuse, so I probably right. really should. Yeah, yeah, no, you should. But well, um, yeah, Salt Lake City did really well. Salt um, Lake City, yeah. I'm trying to think of all the other. Uh, well, yeah, I guess I'm basically thinking of the ones in like the newest uh, Nava City Flag Survey kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, which I think most of those have been posted. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, but they, but they tended to to perform well. Salem, Oregon. Um, oh, for sure. I'm yeah. wondering what the. I, I guess you don't really know, like what the um, 
like demographics or whatever the voters are. I guess it's like, I don't know. I guess it's something. I'm, it does feel very split. Um, regardless of what I, maybe not regardless. Um, oftentimes when I post, if I, so I, if I post a flag like Lincoln, Nebraska, uh-huh. I'll get, say I'll get 10 comments. Um, nine of them will be like, this is great. Like, I love the art deco. Yeah, I love yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then I'll get a 10th that is like, man, like, this is just, this is just a Reddit flag. This is like, you know, just boring, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then on the flip side, I'll post, you know, a bear split in, and split in an atom in half. Yeah. And I'll get a ton of comments saying like, this is the hardest thing of all time. Like, this is sick. Right. And then, but there are sprinkled in people that will be like, this is like, this does not follow the the flag rules. Like this is not a right. Good flag. So yeah, you you so, get some people that are a little bit pedantic about flag rules, and I, I mean, I was gonna like to touch on that last one. Like uh, somebody who said this is a Reddit flag. I'm guessing at least the fact that if they are saying this is a Reddit flag means they're not probably a boomer. They're probably not even Gen X. Yeah. They're probably like yeah. my age, uh, and just you know have a different opinion. But um. Yeah, yeah, no, that is very interesting. Uh, th- and that rolls into another thing I was going to ask is like, how many comments you get, how many retweets and quote tweets and stuff you get, which we touched on a little bit on the quote, t- quote tweets, but uh, um, because it's mostly like a voting mechanism, like you post one uh, and then you, you know, put four to one stars and then, you know, people usually vote on it and that's kind of the end of it. Um, but yeah, so the comments are mostly positive from what you're... I guess if people are bothering yeah. to leave a comment on it, it's mostly positive from what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, okay. 90% of the time. And I've never... I don't think I've ever gotten a comment saying, like, this, like, why are you posting this flag? Like, Right, this because, flag. yeah, so why... It, it, it's usually very, like, it's very healthy, like, disagreement. Like That's good. That's nice. Like, I, like I'm... Someone's saying, like, I'm personally not as big of a fan. Um it doesn't fit like my criteria, my personal criteria, which we all, we all have. Um, what a, what a civil corner of Twitter you've found. It, it, it is. Because like, yeah. honestly, that's not, you know, uh, your mileage may vary kind of thing. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah, there are, there's occasional debates, um, not necessarily about des- the design of the flag, sure. but around, uh, the politics of the flag. Ah, okay. Which As with, I try to get in front of as best I can. Um, it can be tough, though. Yeah, I mean, I guess there are some that uh, are just better not to post. Yeah, but I guess it, there definitely are. Yeah. I guess some of those, like you probably don't know that it's better not to post them until after, and you're getting these comments or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very it's a very healthy community. Um, yeah, it seems like it. I, yeah, I've never seen anything counter to what you're saying. Like it's it's all either positive comments, even like the quote tweets, the retweets are all like, "Hey, uh, give this one four stars," or you know, yeah, whatever. Like, you're not going to quote tweet it if you don't want it to get four stars, probably. But um, yeah, yeah. And, and some of my favorites too are um, usually inadvertent, but I'll, I'll post a flag and one of my followers will, will quote tweet it and say like, "Hey, like I'm I'm from here. Like this is my town's flag." Like I, this is super cool that you posted. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I don't know. That, that must always, be really cool. It's yeah. always fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Last things I was gonna ask on that is like, so what's your usual engagement on um, on like a vote? Do you find that certain ones get engaged with more, or is it pretty much standard across the board as far as like you get, you know, four thousand five whatever hundred. I don't know how many votes you get. <laughs> like, yeah, is it standard yeah. or does it vary? It, it's usually pretty standard. Okay. Um, of course, it's of course relative to the 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 level of engagement yeah. of the tweet above it. Um, well, well, right, right, yeah. So that I'd say that the average daily post probably gets four to five hundred votes, which nowadays, um, I mean, as recently as a few months ago, I was lucky to get fifty. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's which, taken off, which is. It does sound like a lot. I'm I'm happy with. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy with the sample size of four to five hundred people. I think that probably gives you a pretty good indication of how people view that flag. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, uh, the average views I get per actual picture of the flag is probably ten to fifteen thousand. So 
maybe one out of every 25 people act, that view the flag actually scroll down and vote. Right. Um, okay. So it feels like I'm getting a good, you know, it, it's hard to tell because you feel like you're getting a good representation because you're getting so many votes, but are the people that bother to scroll down and vote feeling a certain type of way like, oh yeah, th this is a good enough or a bad yeah. enough flag that I need, I feel the need to, to register my opinion here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. With things like that, I always wonder, like, it seems like the fours and the ones are the most likely to vote. And if it's somebody that is more likely to give it a two or a three, they may give it a two or a three, or they may just kind of like move on with their day and like, you know, not too much, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, like, um, I guess like kind of last thing before we start to wrap up here, but uh, I'm very curious and I'm sure the listeners and viewers are too, to know, like the highest and lowest rated flags. Um, if you don't want to give us the lowest, that's fine. But I do want to know the highest. Um, so the highest is is the Qing Dynasty flag, um, otherwise known as the dragon with the ball or the dragon with the sun. Um, sure, the Dragon Ball, which which um, also performed quite well in the tournament I ran last year too. It was, it was a Final Four finalist. Um, right. It it um, again, it's a scale from from one to four stars. So obviously, four is the maximum. And I got, let me pull it up here. Yeah, I'm looking at the results now. <laughs> yeah, so it got 123 votes. Again, I posted it pretty early in my in the life cycle. So at the time, that was that was as probably as many votes that I've ever gotten. And and it, I, I came in at 3.83 stars. So pretty darn close to to almost everybody giving it four stars. 86% yeah. of people that voted gave it four stars. Is that oh okay yeah I'm getting how this works now right right yeah yeah oh wow the Akia Minid I I never know how to say it Akia Minid yeah, Empire performed, performed pretty well I was yeah, surprised zero by people that gave one. it a one yeah I only had thirty votes on that one well, but still you don't have to tell the listeners that. the viewers will see scientific that. process and all that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so is the Aberdeen Scotland one, is that uh, the, like, city of Aberdeen, or is that the Aberdeen Shear purple and orange, the newish one? That That is the city of Aberdeen. So the three um, castles, I guess you would call it. Um, I don't know if I even know that one. Towers, maybe? Ah, yes, I do know that one. Yeah, yeah, on the red background. It yeah. is, well, I guess it's the... 3.78 and dang yeah you had a few voters on that one too 575 interesting okay so yeah tino ranga tiratsanga only 72 votes but that's uh what number four there and then perm russia okay yeah so this is when you're starting to get a lot more votes on things you got like almost 7700 on this yeah and even then yeah 3.73 yeah, yeah, pretty that's probably wrong showing with that many votes. I, I think I I don't know this to be a fact, but I I'm fairly confident. Um, that's the that's probably my most popular tweet. Um, Fair. I yeah, thought you were gonna say got shared out. I thought you were gonna say you were fairly bit, yeah. confident that you had a ton of people from Perm Russia voting on that one, and oh, I was gonna no, say no. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I strongly I, doubt. I it. would doubt that as well. Yeah. Which honestly, though, does kind of speak to uh, the good, like you know, the strength of the flag. Because right. right. for the Tino right. wrong answer, think... like I mean, you know, less votes on that one earlier in your uh, your account, but like you know, there's realistically and, and think, New Zealanders you know, voting on that and Maori like voting on that probably. But and I, I think it was the same case with Aberdeen. I think there was a lot of problem. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Lincoln, yeah, Nebraska, local, I would guess too. Yeah. Tierra del yeah. Fuego is like the next one that pops out to me. So that's uh, what 11th place and it's 3.64, but with like 3000 plus votes. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that's one where that one it, deserves, you know, it. I, no, I was going to say that that's one where like I've, I feel like I like I like it, but I wasn't sure how it was going to perform. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Because it's it's sort of unique looking, um, and I could see it going either way. Yeah, it's it's interesting picking flags in tournaments like that. I love the colors on the Tierra del Fuego 
Um, I mean, there it's the same, same or similar colors to like the Isle of Silly. Have you done that one? I don't think so. In the UK, I really like that flag, and uh, this like British county flags account keeps posting it and telling me to post it basically but because <laughs> i own it but i haven't flown it yet oh well, i did just get a new setup out back so maybe that's uh in the near future but yeah i'm trying to think of any other surprising ones on here the sweden norway union did pretty well that's yep. the herring salad that i covered in episode one of this actually seychelles okay that one perpetually does pretty well marshall islands i like a lot I don't know if I know the Smithsonian one. That's a cool one. That's a cool one. Um, but that would be an example of like a, a, a you know, kind of different one that you've done too. Yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah. And Pocatello, Idaho, I assume it's the new one. Definitely. Right. Okay. Definitely the new one. Yeah. Do you ever do like, oh man, I don't know. If, so the, you couldn't do it. Actually, in I'm a, glad. Yeah. Yeah. Go, I'm glad go, you brought go. this up. Um, <laughs> Because it's something, and I maybe I should have mentioned this last segment. Another thing I, another idea I potentially kicked around. Um, every so often, I'll post um, a special edition Sunday, uh, which is a, a, I try to pick a fictional flag. Um, and I don't even I don't even add a, a voting system to it because I, don't, I, I like to keep it to actual flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but another idea I kicked around was uh, like on a Saturday, posting like a notoriously awful flag just to kind of have everybody be like point and be like, what that is ridiculous. So like the old Pocatello flag, for example. Um, but I haven't followed through on that. It feels maybe mean spirited, <laughs> but no, I don't know. I mean, in a sense, it's still flags that go hard. They're just going, they're raging hard against the, the dying direction. of the light i guess i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> like the old provo flag yeah. also you know comes up in in my mind mm -hmm. one because mm -hmm. i own it and i think it's the most hilarious flag to to own but well one of them the old pocatello one's up there but i think it's got like a trademark so i don't know if anyone can even make it <laughs> yeah yeah that would be interesting obviously you couldn't do it as part of the same tournament as the march madness because you can't have one of the four branches be all terrible flags because they're not going to, yeah, you know, yeah. make it out of that alive. But yeah, yeah. it could do, you could do like a toilet bowl tournament though. A separate oh, you thing. absolutely. Hey, hey, vote for the worst of these two flags. Yeah, you could and should. I would argue. <laughs> um. All right. Well, so that's all the good ones. Uh, do you want to briefly touch on the bad ones? <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my two lowest rated okay um, all right <laughs> just just to be controversial on the second one the lowest rated which i posted um really early when i started the account and probably didn't know any better um was pueblo colorado oh which i think just one it just says pueblo pretty much in a goofy font yeah yeah not very good <laughs> No, it's oh god, it's got good bones though. It's got the bones of the Milwaukee People's flag almost. I I must have seen something because I did post that unironically. Um, again, maybe like the tenth flag I ever posted, and I had a rough idea of of what I was doing. Um, the, all of that though, that that's the lowest rate of flag I ever posted. It hit, it was bang on average, bang on two star average. So. Even still, I haven't. Voters were pretty kind. Yeah, no, I yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, for it to get more than that. Also, like I'm looking at this and this is definitely the Star Wars font. It could be. It, I, I it, maybe I have to pull it up myself as a reminder. The Pueblo flag, the one that I'm looking at anyway, is absolutely the Star Wars font. And it's got like the little, you know, for the O. It's got, you know, the sun, sunset or whatever. Not exactly a dual sunset like Tatooine, but. Yeah. I do I wonder. Think, I, I think you're right. I wonder if they filmed any Star Wars stuff in Pueblo. I know like most of the Tatooine shots were in Tunisia. Um, yeah. 
yeah. I, it could just be a you know, it's a font choice. <laughs> could could just be a fanboy. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably that. There's some pretty cool there are some pretty cool redesigns out there. Um because like you said, the the bones are there. The O part is cool, yeah. I think. Um it's just yeah. You know, I didn't know at the time it was uh not common practice to have text on flags. Yeah, yeah. That's or bad form, maybe, is the you've, better way to put it. You've come so far. <laughs> I have. I really have. Yeah. We all have, man. You know, I've been into flags for a long time, and it wasn't until I got good flag, bad flag, that I was like, oh, yeah. That, okay, that makes sense. And not, you know, in all cases, even. You know, there are exceptions, obviously. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I have never seen a flag I like that had this characteristic or that one or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Pueblo. Um, I hate to say, but I'm going to be thinking about that one long afterwards on recording. Just <laughs> a damn shame for a flag like that. But anyway, any other tragically low ones you got for us? Or should we start? My, uh... my second lowest, which um, I only bring up uh, because it, for the spectacle more than anything. Um, and this is one I personally disagree with. Uh, is the new Minnesota state flag. That is the that is the second lowest flag I've ever posted. You disagree with the rating? I disagree with the rating. I I do kind of like it. Is it is it like I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's the second worst flag I've ever posted. I think it I think there was I I posted it sort of to gauge um public opinion, um sort of leveraging the the follower base i've got um and i yeah. think it, it was right after they had announced it and i think emotions were riding a little high um i'd be curious to see how it would perform in a couple years yeah uh, yeah i i was gonna say rerun that once they make it official but i think you're correct about a couple of years because that gives people like that gives it room to breathe and yeah. uh room for you know people to fly it or you know buy it and fly it if they want to um or not if they don't etc you know but uh yeah yeah given a little bit of time to breathe i think um that may change i don't know i mean i i'm an unabashed like i do not like the new minnesota state flag i i think it is I, very I, much I, snatching mediocrity from the jaws of greatness or even the jaws of goodness really but um as far as the second lowest one you've ever posted yeah i don't think it deserves that either you know yeah uh, yeah yeah it's and I, and I can i can sympathize with where you're coming from i don't think i certainly don't think they knocked it out of the park um i don't think it's a total swing and miss either um yeah yeah i guess i just have to see how i feel in a couple of years yeah uh, yeah to see if it grows on me yeah I think I do too. Um, it's just like I don't know. That one kind of that one broke my heart a little bit just to see it committed to death and everything. And I think maybe at some yeah. point I may have like um, like a live or something with folks from both like the Utah and Minnesota. Like I don't know. I'll maybe try and like see what the different approaches were. And, and obviously there's Maine and a few other ones, Illinois coming up, whatever. But um, yeah. Do you want to go into the third lowest or? Sure, I let's check it out. Even, um, oh, Monterey, Mexico, Ooh, which I, is I know I know this one, but I cannot think of it. it it's sort of a, it's a seal on a bed sheet, uh, and, and that bed sheet is white. But I think the seal is cool, or maybe I thought the seal was cool. Similar story to Pueblo, where it for whatever reason this stuck out to me as I was looking through Mexican flags, and I thought it was cool. Um, it. December of 2022. Wait, why can I not find this one? What does it look like? Is it the white with just a seal in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I found it. And that was the third low. That was, that was higher rated than Minnesota. I mean, like, I don't like Minnesota's flag, but right. come on, guys. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. I think there's, there's a touch of emotion in it. And I think, yeah. The yeah no process and everything i think the this one, alone that proves your point yeah yeah and there, so so monterey and pueblo i think I, I at the time of posting i thought were cool um and you know 
in hindsight, even even without, I'd like to think separate from how they were rated in hindsight. I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe those weren't great. The one, it's my it's my fifth lowest. Um, it sticks out to me. I I still will defend this flag. Maybe not as being elite, but I still think it's a pretty good flag. Um, Portales, New Mexico. P o r t a l e s. Portales. Oh. Okay, is the one with like a uh, sun rising over like a field, basically? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This was fifth lowest. This is the fifth lowest, and I, again, I don't, I don't think it's like the greatest flag to ever fly. No. Um, I still think it's it's pretty good though. Um, I mean, I, it does... I struggle to see, I struggle to see why it was rated so low. Um. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, all right. It's it's almost like a, a different strange, version I mean. of the Arizona. Well, not a different version. I don't know of a good way to put it. But like the rays coming out at the bottom, like into, you know, what's supposed to be like the furrows of the field or whatever, uh, you know, flip those to the top. And obviously the sun is not the same as the five point Arizona star. But like, I don't know. There's a version of this that kind of looks like that. Yeah, and actually, the the I guess it's just all the color is, mixing that people didn't like. I I think so too. It, it it almost it looks less like a flag and more like like a children's art project or something. Um, but I don't think it's aesthetically displeasing, and it's it's especially surprising to me because the sun actually is a is a strong design element um, in some of the flags I've posted. So Roswell, New Mexico, uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, trying to think of some other ones off the top of my head. Uh, there's a there's a oblast in Ukraine, uh, Donetsk, I think. Yeah, Donetsk is the one. Yeah, yeah. That they, one's they've cool. all all performed very well. All centered around the sun. Yeah, I, I guess I thought this would this would follow suit, but it was not meant to be. Yeah, but I mean, like, the one thing that this has that those don't is, like, this one's bisected. I can't... Yeah. I guess, like, Donuts, is it is it bisected black and blue? I can't remember. Um, but I know it does look like... It's similar to the Milwaukee Peoples, where it's, uh, you know, sun setting and just smaller little bits of sun yeah, under it. Yeah, I was going to say, it might technically be, but they, they do a better job of, of making it blend. Yeah, yeah, I guess it, maybe it is bisected, but just better than... Uh, blue and green because blue and green yeah i mean even this sun alone it would do better with the yellow on the outside and the red on the inside i think um although i want to talk because my literal flag has you know blue and then red and then yellow so you know i can't say too much i think my colors blend better than this but you never know yeah yeah um yeah all right so yeah some of those make sense as bottom of the pack some of them, like you said, I think are more like emotion based, like in the moment kind of thing. Minnesota, yeah, I guess, comes yeah. to mind. Uh, yeah. Even as someone who's not a huge fan, but all right, yeah, I think it probably is uh, time to start winding down and do plugs and all that sure. here. For so, sure. um, yeah, you are as my guest, you're first up. So, where can we? Uh, I think we've probably mentioned it almost to death at this point, but if they don't know. Where can people find you, follow you, you know, vote in the polls, all that good stuff? Yeah, so so um, you can find me on Twitter. The uh, account name is Flags That Go Hard. The account handle is all mashed together, Flags That Go Hard, minus the letter A in the word that. It's flags That Go Hard. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as far as polls go, I post uh, daily. I try to post around noon Eastern time every day. Um, sometimes a little later, depending on if I'm stuck working or not. Um, for the upcoming tournament that we've been talking about earlier, I'll be releasing the list of flags, Selection Sunday, as, I, as it's colloquial, colloquially called. Yes. Uh, that will be Sunday, March 17th. Today. Which is when this is coming out. Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Um, Indeed. And then voting will start tomorrow, Monday, March 18th. Um, and run for the better part of a month. So um, if you're interested, give it a follow um, or just vote. I'm, I'm 
happy with just any sort of any sort of engagement to try to um get a get a, a strong resolution and have a fun tournament um yeah yeah that's all on my end absolutely yeah no i will be voting on every single one of them um at least once <laughs> you know i got my main account too no no, no. I, yeah. I i hereby promise to only vote once on all of them but uh uh yeah i'm very excited to see like honestly not just which ones you know make the final four but honestly which ones make the cut at all and uh pretty stoked to see what that fourth like you know quadrant of it ends up being too so yeah um yeah we will definitely be following that very closely those who would like to follow the show that don't already on all at based platforms we are at flagged for content like the number uh youtube we are at flagged for content all stalled out um and i think that's pretty much it and um yeah at this point i've got to admit to myself i have no idea how to end this show so rob do you have anything that (laughs) may be able to walk us out here i i just hope that um whoever you are listening to this whenever you may be listening to it i hope the rest of your your day and your week goes hard hell yeah man hell yeah let's end on that energy and on that energy we will say goodbye and we will catch you on the fly side take care y'all Flagged for Content is a Flags for Good podcast. Go to flagsforgood.com for more info.